Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And as promised in our daily financial news this morning, I have a special guest with us today. I'm going to call her Beyonce because apparently when we do a transcript, it just converts to Beyonce, but I will let her introduce herself. How are you doing? I'm really uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, and Beyonce on, 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 on the podcast. So my name is Beata Shalet. I am the growth architect and I am a business strategist. I help to provide strategies for visionaries and leader who want to scale their impact. Yeah, that is awesome. And that's really why I accepted it and I wanted to talk with you because again, it's about scaling your impact, right? I, I'm someone who for 20 or 30 years had a sales quota for myself, for my team. I was driven by yearly goals. I operated in that and was very good at it. Then I lo and behold, retire three years ago. I'm still a type A person. I want to give back. So this is an area where I am weak, right? I haven't been able to really translate. I, I can do activities. I can see a future, but I, I just don't know how to tie all this together. So I was very happy that you reached out and we can talk about also help me selfishly, but also help all of our followers. So why don't you tell us what a growth architect is, a strategist is, and we'll just start having some fun. Yes. So um, I want you to imagine that um, we are sort of in the era of niching, right? So everybody goes, you get rich in the niche, you do the one thing and you're the best at it. And that's where you bank in the bucks. And then you realize that that's a really tall order to get uh, rich in the niche because there's so many people that are already in the niche. And so where's a niche in the niche for you? So as a growth architect or as a strategist, what I look at is the opposite of that. So mm. we're going in a plane, we're going to 36,000 feet. And we are going to observe the terrain and then we're going to map out our journey and we decide which airport we're landing on first. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's really what a strategy is. A strategy is a long-term plan for you, for your, um, for your wealth creation, for your retirement, for your uh, business growth, for your personal wealth. So, there are so many elements in it that you want to map it out. Otherwise you are like the majority of the population always reactive right. to what's coming at you. And then you determine, well, is it a good thing or a bad thing? But you forget that you actually can actively initiate mm. these items and say, well, you know, I, I, I planned for this in two years from now, I want to do X mm. and I'm doing this with the following purpose because energetically, Michael, and, and um, I think that's a, that's a really big part of what I do is the, the mindset piece mm -hmm. is that you have to see it. And when you have a strategy, it helps you to see it very clearly as to where you're going to. Very cool. So I, I love this because this is so... 180 and, and powerful from lots of stuff going on today. A lot of folks that are are seeking that vision or being an entrepreneur or side hustle, all of this stuff, a lot of them are doing kind of riches in the niches and they're they're trying to get laser focused. They're probably like me getting busy on activity, but they're they don't really they haven't that that plane, that that analogy, right? You're at 36,000 feet and there's this all this terrain and there are a lot more choices. So let's, let's dig into that more. Let's be that, let's be that mom or dad or, or couple. They have a busy day job, but they, they want a better future, right? Uh, financial future uh, for them and their kids. So what, what are some things that we can do to extract them? Because so much today is a microwave society driven by social media, a lot of fake social media stuff. So let's give people permission to, to look up. It's, it's that time of year where there's a lot of self-reflection. We just had Thanksgiving rolling into the, uh, the holidays uh, the, at the end of the year. So what, what can we tell them to do? Well, so the first thing I want you to do is really answer the, the, the most important question in life ever. What is it that you want? Ah. And most of the time when I ask this question, Michael, and this is really interesting. Now, if I ask a five-year-old, how, how quickly do you think that answer is going to pop out? Oh, I would guess really quick. Super quick. Yeah. And answer will come out. Who well, knows what it, it might change every 30 minutes, but yeah. Right. It might be firefighter. It might be ice cream, you know, depending. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Currently right now, probably some sort of toy. Yes. Exactly. But, but that doesn't change the fact that there is a point somewhere in our lives where we are forgetting yes. to even contemplate the idea of what is it that I want mm. or 
if you can't answer it this way, what would it be that would, ha would have to happen that makes you really happy? And then you go, I don't know, because, you know, our entire system, the structure of our system is designed to make us be realistic. And then we hear all this um, wonderful nonsense of there's, if it's too good to be true, says who, is uh, don't take more than your fair share of everything. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that there was an allocation. Yeah, this uh, is just a pie with only like eight pieces. What's up? Yeah, so don't take more than that one pie, you know, and leave that one, that one last cookie, you know, don't yeah. ever eat the last cookie. Yeah. And so we, we, we're really programmed, Michael, for, you know, as, as we grow up to think of things as what we're not supposed to do and we mm. forget what we are supposed to do. So that's the question to your audience. What is it that you want? Do you want to be a leader? Do you want to run a successful business? If that is the case, is it a million? Is it 2 million? Is it 5 million? Is it 10 million? Do you want to be the next Facebook? Mm. Um, are you going to want to have passive income, which a lot of people come to you for that? It's like, mm -hmm. I don't really want to work that hard. I want to, you know, want to have a couple of rental properties and then right. make my money that way, have passive income and enjoy my life. So what's that exactly look like? Who is in it? Mm. And that is the first step of determining in your strategy of what it is that we need to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, a lot of stuff to think about there. Another thing, I, again, I, I stalked you on Instagram this morning. Uh, why don't you share your Instagram page? Because it's definitely something others should follow. Yes. So my handle is at Beate Chalette, and that spells B-E-A-T-E-C-H-E-L-E-T-T-E. Awesome. Do yourself a favor, follow that. There's one thing you put out there, I think it was four or five months ago, talking about the rich and poor mindset. Everybody I talk to has their own kind of flavor of that. I would love to kind of hear more about when you, when you're, when, when you, when you want to kind of communicate mindset and how important it is, what does that look like to you, rich versus poor? Yes. So one of the things that when you have this poor mindset, you are looking to give yourself permission to have a portion of what you think is available, uh, right? Yes. This is the piece where you talked about, there's only one pie and with a lot of hard work and mm -hmm. determination and effort, you get to have one slice of the pie and depending right. on how hard you work, that's the slice of the pie. Okay. A, a rich mindset is to say, everywhere I go, there's opportunity and abundance. Right. Making money is easy opportunities come to me easy mm. and you come at it from the perspective of looking at challenges not as a challenge but as an opportunity in disguise ah, because gro right. michael growth opportunities don't show up on your front door on yeah. a nice on a nice letter size with a, with a beautiful <laughs> opportunity <design>. here <laughs> opportunity here it shows up as a challenge it yeah. says you're going to have to figure out how to find $250,000 to invest in this property. You don't have the money. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it looks like a complete challenge, but really it is an opportunity because it forces you to stretch. So the rich and the poor mindset comes in where the poor mindset goes, I can't possibly do that. That's yeah. so difficult. Yeah. That's, that's totally outside my comfort zone. There's, I mean, it, it, I guess it could work. And then you start to talk yourself out of it. Yeah. little by little by little until you snap back. I call this the rubber band yeah. until the rubber band is stretched too far and you let it go. And then it, it goes right back to where it used to be sure. on the rich mindset. You have the, why not? Why not? Yeah. That's the, the, it wouldn't have come to me if the opportunity to find this money wouldn't be out there. Hmm, I wonder where it is. I'm, right. I wonder where I can find the money. So it is a, from a, you know, it's often also referred to as the middle class mindset is the middle class mindset is, you know, be careful, be careful. It's a, you know, don't, don't. Yeah. Don't touch the hot stove. We touched yeah, the hot no, stove before. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And you're so right. I mean, uh, yeah. Opportunities don't come a big letterhead that says opportunity here. This one's for you. No one else sees it, especially in real estate, right? The best opportunities, because that's one thing that a lot of people don't appreciate about real estate is, Yes, uh, real estate's an inefficient market. It's not stocks, right? Where you know every second of, of every day what the price is. Real estate, you, you, the seller has issues or reasons, you know, time of day, time of year, winter, summer, all of those things. You can really use it to your advantage, but 
you're never alone. There's always more people looking for the same deal. Everybody wants a deal. And you know, most of my career in, in putting together a portfolio that allowed us to retire early, again, people don't really appreciate this. 98% of the deals I've done were on the MLS which means multiple listing service means everybody in the world could have done what I did. Nobody did. Everything but was- see, But see, this is, I think, because in your mindset, you, you go on the MLS and you go, huh, I wonder if there's something out there. Every day. Every, Every day. day. So you already walk in there and you already trained your mind yes. to, to, you know, to, to be your little spidey <laughs> senses, uh, crawling through it and yeah. going, I wonder- what the deal might look like today. Absolutely. And so because you're creating this energetically, the expectation, because that is what you want. Yes. If you've been clear that that is what you want, now it can actually find you. If you, if you just go to look yeah. without any plan, then you may not see these opportunities. And that's what I refer to as the rich and the poor mindset is really an, a more an energetic idea of how, mm -hmm. do, we, how do we pursue or view the world. And, you know, I had an interesting conversation with my brother and I really recognize sometimes when you talk to somebody who is still in that mindset, mm -hmm. how different they view the world yeah. uh, than I do. And I, I almost like look at him sometimes when he says stuff, I'm like, seriously? Yeah. You don't mean that, do you? <laughs> but he does. He's yeah. always in opposition. He, he, he reacts to everything that comes from life to him. Yeah. And then he determines on whether or not he values this as good or bad. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have lots of that in my circle for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's, it is so funny because I've spent the last three years trying to help people get that energy, right? I call it, you have to simplify everything, right? So I have this thing called a buy box, right? So when I bought everything out of the MLS, like you said, I was, ex I was so excited that I was already looking forward to tomorrow looking for the deal. Cause I had trained myself to know that eventually tomorrow is going to find a deal. So to take that to the masses, I've had to simplify it. So I tell people to get a buy box. It's this big, right? Not don't look at everything. Look at your buy box every single day. Cause you're right. I just, something just clicked. I'm trying to create that positive energy so that it can build and you could, it, it is like, it's like a spidey sense. It feels repetitive for the first 10 days. You don't understand what's going on. And then like day 23, oh, I see it. I, it's right there. So I, I love, there is this energy that almost gets created and your mind just starts to, it, it starts to look differently when you, it, and you're consistent on a buy it box, you start to see it differently. So that was a, that was a great aha moment. Thank you for that. Yes, and the second piece I think that I want to mention is that um, there's also a, a part of discipline around this, because if you go in and you go like, I don't really know if it's going to work, but hey, you know, I, you know, I, I put money in the program. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to just check it out. Yeah, you know, yeah. Who knows? You know, who knows yeah. if something's happened? Yeah, that does not work. Um, the discipline of a wealthy mindset or a rich mindset is to be very clear that you are not allowing any of these uh, negative uh, old programs to run. Right. right? Your new program, the, 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 the USB port that you put in to override that old programming, yes. you cannot ever take it out. It has to run all the time. The minute you take it out, your old programming goes and says, ah, I don't know if that's yeah. gonna work. But the expectation of saying, you know what? I'm not listening to that anymore. That's I used to be like that right. because the idea is that if somebody has done it and you clearly have done it. Mm -hmm. So if you did it, Michael, yep. it must be possible. Exactly. So if it is possible, it must be possible for other people. Yes, I totally agree. So what is it that you do that they don't do? So do yeah. what Michael does. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really clear. I've gotten very clear at it. Focus, buy box, because too many, if you make it too big, you don't go anywhere. You start getting negative leverage, like you go backwards. So focus, I call it a buy box. Daily discipline, I ask for 20 minutes a day. That's it. Some people try to outthink me and go, well, if I give you 60 minutes a day, I can do three times as much. No, you're going backwards. When you, when you add too many inputs, you don't get that positive leverage. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to go here is Sometimes you got to change your network, right? There, your circle of influence 
can pull you backwards. They are almost uncomfortable to see you grow. Uh, so something I've added just as a total giveaway is a private group just with people doing the work, speaking the same language. Uh, so what do you think about the personal network? Is that something to kind of watch out for? Uh, actually, I'm so glad you said that because this is the part where a lot of people falter. Yeah. Um, the, the, the piece is when you step into a leadership position, right? And the mm -hmm. leadership position really is to shift from when you believe that life is happening to you, when you say life is happening for me and I am in charge, mm -hmm. right? And when you do that, you are going to be something different than the way you grew up. Mm -hmm. And suddenly your brother, sister, mother, father, uncle, aunt, you know, you'll hear that, oh, so you think you're better than, yeah. than, than, than I am. You're different. You're different, right? Oh, I hate that, yeah. And, and you go in and you say, as a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> yeah, own it, right? Yeah. You, 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 you know, I always say, don't back off, double down. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a good one. Most people just fold, they're just like, Pff. Yeah. Right, like because it. you know when when I sold my business to Bill Gates and I made millions of dollars, it was to no surprise my brother who says the money really changed you. And I looked at him and I said, "No, I said the money didn't change me. My money changed you." Oh! And my money changed me. I like that <laughs> because because at, at one point it is about if you clear what you want and you set out to say. I am creating a better future for my family. I'm creating a better future for my children, for my wife, for my husband. I want to support my parents. I want to do support my, my charities. I want to really make this impact in my life. Mm. The minute you decided that, what you've done up until now does not fit anymore mm. because you're now expanding. Right. So when you step into that, people will fall away. People will call all kind call call you all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. They self-select. Mm -hmm. And that is when you need to really surround yourself with people who are all thinking like you, because then you go, oh, oh, I, I didn't even know that there's so many people that are so positive, that are so full of this this wonderful life energy that you know have this sparkle in their eyes. I was yeah. on a I was on an event uh, with my mindset uh, trainer and they had asked me to come on as a testimonial. And I was listening to the other people that were giving this testimonial and everybody had this just like spark of joy. I mean, they were alive. Yeah. And, I, and, and when I came on, I said, I just want you guys to pay attention. Everybody who just spoke and gave a testimonial has this inner light. That's it. That's when you're tapped in with the real stuff, the yeah. stuff of possibilities. Yeah, this this group that I've just thrown out there again, it's it's it's, it's free. It's it's I call it the happiest place on the internet because it's a thousand. Right now, it's a thousand and sixty one people. I think I counted this morning, all speaking the same vocabulary, all supporting each other, all asking great questions. Some of them are hard, right? B bad stuff does happen. We're in a people business called real estate, but we're all moving forward. And and it's um, you're right. There's a sparkle and energy. Um, man, it's just so fun to see. Yeah, and and I think to me that 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 if if we can have people that are listening uh, uh, to this podcast, and by the way, I'm gonna I always say that if you're listening to this podcast, podcast, make sure you subscribe and follow and leave Michael a testimonial, okay? Yeah. Where you say he's awesome. I took something away because that helps him to reach more people and scale his impact. I always forget to do that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, you know, and, and we are here to be spreading this energy mm -hmm. and to um, bring as many people with us as we possibly can, but this only works through possibility. So I would say, be disciplined. We talked about this. Uh, just stop listening to people that are giving you the false information and uh, understand that it is possible because other people are already doing it. And if, yeah. it, if they do it, you can do it too. Yeah, I agree. If, it's, if, if there's one person out there uh, that's done it. It's it's proof positive it can be done. It's frankly why I took the time to write a second book and writing is so hard for me because I wanted to capture 15 stories of 15 people from tough spots that made it. And like, you should be able to find somebody in there that was in a worse spot than you and they got done. So no excuses, you know, start doing the work. So that is awesome. One of the things that obviously we have here as we're wrapping up 2021 is we have 2022 around the corner. You and I both know New Year's resolutions are coming fast and uh, heavy. Uh, we both think goals are important. We're both goals driven. 
Um, so I know you have an event coming up. Uh, so let's talk about that. Uh, people should uh, register for that and yes. just talk about, you know, 2022 and, and what people could do when they're sitting back and, and thinking about it. Yeah, so number one, I think that um, 2022, everybody needs to be aware that business, the way it's been done, has been permanently changed. Yeah. And uh, if you're still sitting here and waiting for things to go back to the way they once were, um, you are on the wrong train. It's not yeah. going to happen, and okay. it's not going to happen for a long time to come. So the change of uh, the clarity of what it is that you want and how this new life that you want to create is really absolutely mission critical. I know a ton of people that have had the best years of their lives. My, you know, I mean, I lost a lot of my business as a speaker in 2019. I had to completely rebuild, um, you know, from, from, from scratch, coming back out and saying, what am I going to do? How am I going to be able to help people? So I had an excellent year. So now, now you're really at a crossroads where you say, okay, am I going to do what I've always done? Uh, I'm going to do some wishy-washy uh, smart goals, you know, okay. Uh, which I do not believe in. I believe in audacious, hairy, crazy goals, because the object, you know, the way I look at goals is that a quantum leap is when two atoms have uh, a sudden burst of energy and they and they do these big leaps. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows why. So if I believe that in nature or something like this exists, it must be existing for us as well. Mm -hmm. So why not go for quantum leap instead of that gradual, you know, that gradual step by step by step by step. Mm -hmm. So in our goal settings, and I call it the super simple goal setting, which I run once a year for free. Um, and um, if you want to be on the list, just go to airtightavatar.com. It's a little bit of a different program. Airtightavatar.com is how you find out your ideal a client avatar, mm. which is helpful in any business. But if you're on that list, I'll send you the invitation because we are about to put this program together and launch it. So we'll do it first thing in January, uh, mm -hmm. super simple goal setting. So the idea of, of super simple goals is to say, if I give you a really audacious goal, what would that be? And now I'm going to ask you to double it. No, oh, I like it. That's so funny. Oh, that's amazing. If you were on my sales teams the last 10 years of my career, we would all get our number January 1. 10 million, 50 million, whatever it is. I would give them their number. And like two minutes later, I would everything we would do the next three days would be to double it. It's so funny that you say that. The last 10 years, I'm not interested in hitting my goal. I only want to double my goal. Why are we talking about hitting our goal? Oh, that's you know, you, so you, funny. Yeah, 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 you're, absolutely, you're absolutely correct. And so goal setting isn't designed for you to go back down that same road of let's play it. Yeah, let's be a little better than last year. Yeah. So if I, so if I brought in, you know, 200,000, uh, let's go for 200, 230. Yeah. 15% right? growth. Woo. 15% growth. <laughs> and if I do that over the next 10 years, you know, I'm going to be in good shape. No, you'll get no. your slice of your pie. Yeah. You get your slice of the cat of your pie. That's hilarious. In my world, you get to bake your own pie. Yeah, you, I get to make machines that make pie. I can get all <laughs> it doesn't even have to be apple. It could be pecan or banana. Doesn't matter. I make the machine. I don't I don't want to slice. I like that. A hundred percent, yes. So that's really the that's really what I do is that that's and nice. I have a process in place that's you know, and everything I do is really simple. I don't overcomplicate things. It's just like look, push the envelope. Yes. Because your best case scenario is that it's going to be awesome. Your worst case scenario is nothing's changing. Yeah. So again, one time that is air type avatar. Air, air tight. Oh, tight. Got it. Air, air tight avatar.com. And again, this is a, um, a masterclass on how to create a customer profile. It works really well for anyone who is uh, still in an employment position and yeah. wants to ask for a raise or find a new job to understand what this person they're talking to um, has going on in their head or entrepreneurs. But I also think that would be very helpful in real estate for to sure. understand the type of, you know, seller of properties, because if you understand what's going on in their mind and what they're, what they're worried about, you know, it's always about adjusting <laughs> your language in such a way oh, yeah. that it is specific to what they want, not I, you, what they want. Exactly. And I would actually tell you just a slight twist on this. And it's actually something I, you know, give away for free. A lot of people in, in real estate entrepreneurs are marketing to sellers. 
that's actually the wrong word. You're not marketing to sellers. You are marketing to owners who might sell, right? Because again, I own a bunch of stuff and I get marketed by these people and they're all going, hey, I'll buy your house cash, your quick close, blah, blah, blah. How do you know I want cash? Because cash, you know, some people need it, some people don't. How do you know I want a quick close? Maybe my, maybe I want to be here for one last Christmas. How do you know I'm even a seller? So change your vocabulary to market to owners. We all know it takes eight to 10 contacts to get anywhere. So treat me as an owner. And, you know, let's see where we go from there. So again, it's, it's, it's oh my just God, so I'm so awesome. glad you say that I, I collect bad realtor postcards. I do too. It's so funny. And, 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 and because I do a lot in the real estate space, I, you know, I've spoken at Woman Up and uh, I, I did the st strategic planning for the Greater Los Angeles Realtor Association. Awesome. And, and I always talk about it is you make so many assumptions. Yeah. You make an assumptions that I want to know how much my house is worth. You think I don't know that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could go to uh, Zillow too. <laughs> you, 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 exactly. You make all these assumptions that you know what is important to me. And that is, and, and you all, and everybody is the same. It's exact same thing. It's like they're mass marketing or there's yeah. a school for bad real, real estate <laughs> advertising. Yeah, exactly. So in order to stand out, you need to understand what's important to me, yeah. right? And maybe for me, what's important is a real estate exchange so that, yeah, you know, I have a daughter so that I can have a four unit apartment building, you know, and I could yeah. make, you know, and I could put her on one. I mean, what do you know? But these assumptions are, are bad. So you yeah. want to know what people are thinking and then ask them questions. And yeah. Of making these assumptions. Most of you marketing in the real estate space are burning 98 to 99% of your marketing because yes. we're not sellers. You all, every card I get, sell this, sell that. So have you guys not done your research? I mean, I haven't sold anything in a long time. I mean, it's just crazy, ah, crazy stuff. So, um, how can, uh, how can people follow you, get part of your world? Cause you truly are helping people hit that, uh, uh, free site again for the 2022 plan. I, I, people need to join. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. So number one, of course, uh, follow me on Instagram again at Beate Shillette. And uh, you can go to my website, BeateShillette.com. And uh, I do um, very frequently on a regular basis, free workshops and webinars. And awesome. everything I do is around getting you a strategy so you can scale their, you can scale your impact, and I make everything really simple because strategy, after all, is very simple. It's just a roadmap to where you want to go. There you go. Well, thank you for this. This has been so much fun for me this morning. Thank you very much for doing this. Uh, give a shout out to your team for helping put this together. I appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Thanks.